Hello and welcome to Walking in the Word. Today we're going to turn our attention to some passages in Isaiah 60 regarding God's promises being fulfilled and His people arising and having the favor of God on them because they restore once again their covenant relationship with God. So Alton, where would you like to start with that? Well... <clears throat> You know, a lot of things we try to put off into the future. And we're, we talk about the glory of God and, and how we're going to come into this glory of God. Well, the glory of God is, is in God. It's the weight of who God is dwelling in his people. And so it's not a thing in the future. Forget the sweet by and by and think about the sweet now and now. He wa doesn't want you to put this off and in, in, he wants you to enjoy the benefits of it for your whole life. And so when we read this, he's talking to Israel. But uh, something that people that were never in the military may not understand is when you talk about, say, an army, you're talking about a unit. It's made up of a whole bunch of people. Israel was made up of a whole bunch of people. And if you read Paul's teachings, you'll find out that not all Israel is Israel. Just because you were circumcised or, or were born in the, of the seed of Abraham, that's not what makes you Israel, okay? You have to come into a place like Jacob did where you get changed and become that prince of God, okay? And then it's a, it becomes a, a unit. When he called Israel out of Egypt, he called a whole bunch of people out of Egypt. And he also calls out in, as an individual, okay? We always talk about a chain not being or being only as strong as its weakest link. So it's up to the individual to establish his relationship with God on that basis, but then understand that it has to grow into a unit, a, a body of Christ. It's it, We're not just trying to save our own bacon. We're trying to get a whole nation together and and become what God wanted wanted us to be in the first place. So when we say arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Okay? Um, that word arise, think about resurrection. It means you were like this and now you're like this. And so whenever anything arises, it goes from a horizontal to a vertical, <laughs> if you want to put it that way, and you begin to do things. There's a lot of things you can't do laying down in bed. And so this word arise, some of its meanings are to abide or to live in something, to accomplish, get something done, continue, which means you don't just start something and then leave it off. Decree it. In other words, that's how you speak. Sometimes we tend to speak in the negative because things are happening around us and we just let those circumstances dictate how we're going to feel. So we need to, to decree the things that God is saying, and then perform it, okay? We like for God to perform what he promises. Well, he would like for us to perform what he promises and wants to put in us, and we establish it, we stand up, we succeed, okay? He wants us to succeed, 
And so, then it says, shine. It's the word or, okay? When creation started, he said, let there be or, okay? And it also means become or, become light. Now, some people say, well, he he didn't even make the sun or the moon till the third day. That's right. So I guess we're not talking about electromagnetic radiation. We're talking about enlightenment. We're talking about the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that God had that created all this. And he's saying for us to become that. When he talked to Abraham, he said, come out from Ur of the Chaldees. Okay? In other words, come out from the Babylonian wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and I'm going to take you somewhere and teach you something different, something that works, and I'm going to give it to you. And so we all know how that turned out. <clears throat> so... um this light has now come upon us, okay? That resurrection life that, that Jesus initiated has now come to, to us, okay? They were talking about something that hadn't happened yet in Isaiah, but now it's happened. So everybody, I don't care who you are, can take advantage of it and become it. <clears throat> So, um, that word light means luminary, it means uh, happiness, <laughs> okay? Darkness usually talks of gloom and doom and, and stuff like that. Um, and this light is, is come. It's not going to come. It's not already has come. It, it, God talks in the present a lot of times. So we have to understand that don't let your past dictate who you're going to be and don't think you got it planned out what you're going to be. First, you got to deal with right now. Okay. And this is where, where we talked about it being abiding. This is your new home. This is where you should be living in. Okay? He says, I'm going to go and prepare a, a place for you. And in my father's house are many mansions. Everybody thinks they're going to get a Taj Mahal or something. No, you are going to be the mansion. Okay, that he is going to dwell in. And so we understand that word glory is kabod, means the weight of who God is. And it's very important that we understand that when Paul says, uh, this is a mystery, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And it's that Christ in you that's going to cause you that Holy Spirit to take God serious, to take whatever he says to have weight with you. And you begin to act on that because you believe it. If you don't believe it, well, you know, anybody, I don't care what their credentials are, if they give you some sound advice and you don't want to take it from them and you just blow it off, you're the loser. Okay, I think about Elijah being with that widow and, and you know, that raven had to come and bring him his food. And I've seen ravens ankle deep in, in carrion and dead animals and eating. And here it brings you your food either in its mouth or in its, in its talons. And sometimes somebody 
brings us the word of God and we don't want to accept it from them because we think somehow that they're a dirty bird. <laughs> and what happens is you would starve to death. So sometimes we have to understand the spiritual ramifications of what's going on and accept what God's given us in his word no matter who it comes from. And so um, we don't want to not accept something because of who it comes from. And I can tell you stories about that, but we don't have time today. Um, and it's risen, Zarak. It means it shoots forth beams. But it's interesting because it also means when, when uh, things rise up on your skin and cause lep and they show leprosy, leprosy will show up, okay? And you think, well, I don't, I don't want leprosy, <laughs> and I don't either. But sometimes we don't think in terms of what God thinks of. What God does is leprosy to the enemy. You ever think of that? Okay? They want to call good evil and evil good. So when his leprosy shows up and it's contagious, <laughs> something different's happening, isn't it? So then as we move on here, it says... For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, okay, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. When we're talking about this darkness, we're talking about misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, wickedness, obscurity, and there's other ones. But I think that pretty much covers it and gives you the idea that right now people are in this state. They're fearful. They got all kind of things on the news every day telling them what's going to happen. And I always get a kick because they never say specifically something's going to happen. They say may, might, we think it might. It, and, it, and even if they if it happens, it's going to happen in a year you won't even be alive in. So what's the deal? Well, God wants us to not live in that place, to not be making our decisions based on fear and misinformation. And they get a kick out of a thing where you can call them up and, and get the truth verified. Whose truth? If you say something good and they don't like it, they'll say that it's misinformation and they will call you a name. <laughs> well, what, what's going to happen when they find out and they stand before the Lord and have to give account? And, you know, I feel sorry for them. But right now is the time for them to uh, take care of that problem ahead of time and get yourself under the blood of Jesus Christ. Because I don't care what you've done, when you come under the blood of Jesus, that gets swept away and he gives you the power to not go there anymore. And so... Um, it says that this darkness shall cover... or it, It'll actually fill up every nook and cranny that it can fill up. And so, uh, and then the, the gross darkness is gloom, like when a sky lowers and a storm's coming, okay? And people are a nation, a group of people. And so, uh, it says... Arise, Zarak again, to shoot forth those beams to appear as a symptom of leprosy. We're going to be bad news to the bad side of the tracks. 
And you know what? Don't look at people as being your enemy. Look at the spirits that run them and so on. At this time, I'm going to give it over to Nancy again. Okay, thank you, honey. If we continue then with Isaiah 60, verse 3, let's read that. And the nations shall come to your light. Now, the word nations, the King James says Gentiles, both apply. Because this, keep in mind, was written by Isaiah to the Jewish people. Anyone that was not a Jew was considered a Gentile, considered foreign, because they did not know God. They were considered Gentiles. Now, if we were to look at Daniel chapter 11, the prophet Daniel made a statement concerning the people that do know their God. And he said in chapter 11, verse 32, But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So let's look at this word light. The people that, of other nations, people that don't know God, in other words, shall come to your light. The word light means to be or make luminous. It means the break of day. So dawn, in other words. It means glorious. It means to give or show light. It also means to set on fire or shine. So the people that know their God shall come to your light, you that know God, who are set on fire by the knowledge and the glory of God. Jeremiah the prophet in chapter 20 verse 9 says, And his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I couldn't help but speak. I couldn't stop speaking. So we get a picture here of the nations or the peoples that don't know their God of the earth coming to this or this light of God, the enlightenment of God that is in his people that they know they have need of. And then that verse continues, Isaiah 60, verse 3 continues, and kings, it says, kings will be drawn to you. The word kings means to induct or to bring into royalty, hence by implication to take counsel, consult, to be or make or set up rule. So if you look at the definition of the word king, it's very telling because it's saying that the peoples of the earth that don't know God will come to you who have the enlightenment of God in you and they will be brought into a place inducted into by taking counsel with and consulting with you who have the enlightenment of God into places of rulership and leadership. That's quite an impactful statement. They come to you because they see the light, the enlightenment, the knowledge, the glory of God, and that brings them into a place of being prepared as they take counsel of the ways of God from God's people to be put in a position of authority to rule. So it says in Kings will come to the brightness of your rising. The word dawn, again, it's the word zarak, which means, as Alton said, to shoot forth beams. Well, at the dawning of a day, what does the sun do as it comes up over the horizon? It shoots beams of light into the darkness. So the word zarak also means to rise as the sun. So you can't get away from this dawning. As we take on more and more of the enlightenment of God in our lives, we will shoot forth beams of his glory, his knowledge, his understanding, his counsel. And even the peoples that don't know God will be drawn to that, not drawn to us. We're just the carriers, we're the vessels. But they'll be drawn to the light of God, the enlightenment of God, and desire to have counsel. I know of two instances. A pastor years ago that I knew in India said that his local governors, the, the regional governors in his big city that he was a citizen of, would come to him for counsel. And they would say, Brother Kamana Pali, we need 
some insight and wisdom from God on this matter. Can you pray and get understanding? Again, if you look at the prophet Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he was troubled by it. In chapter 2, it's quite a story. He was going to kill all of the wise men, all of the men of renown in the land because no one could tell him his dream and the interpretation. So what happens? Daniel comes and says, Please, king, don't kill all the wise men of the land, which would have included him. He said, Give me time. We will pray, and God will show us what to tell you. And that's exactly what happened. So in that case, a bunch of men in the land were killed, were not killed because Daniel had the wisdom of God and the answer of God. Another instance that I, I think of is a, a PhD in business. He was a, a business professor at a Christian university, and he and some other businessmen took a tour in China. And Chinese business owners came to him and said, Dr. So-and-so, we have financial resources, we have the labor force to produce a good product, but what we don't have is ethics. Can you please teach us Christian ethics so that our businesses will succeed? What an incredible thing, but I just count that as a drop in the bucket of what I believe we're going to see. And as we have circled back to this particular chapter, Isaiah 60, I believe it's, it's time. This is the time to cover this because we're going to begin to see people that are in darkness who need the light of God seeking God's people out and saying, can you please help me understand what to do in this situation? Proverbs 4, eight or 4.18 rather says this, the path of the just is as a shining light there's that or, light, that shines. And or, again, means to make luminous, break of day, glorious, enlighten, all of those plus other words are in the definition. As a shining light that shines more and more, in other words, brighter and brighter, dawning, to the perfect day, to the perfect day. The word perfect means established. It means to make something sure to make something prosperous, to be fixed, to be set aright. And so the light of the just will shine increasingly more until the full establishing of the day. What a powerful statement. And then verse 19 in Proverbs 8 continues, The way of the wicked is as darkness. And Alton, as he explained, darkness, what happens? You grope around in the dark, you don't know what's, what's ahead of you. The way of the wicked is as darkness, Proverbs 4 says. They don't know what they're stumbling at. They can't see what's ahead of them. And then Proverbs 11, verse 5, kind of continues this theme. It says, the righteousness of the perfect, and again, entire, complete, upright, those of integrity is the word perfect, shall direct his way. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. And verse 6 continues by saying, The righteousness shall deliver God's upright ones. So I encourage you strongly to learn how to pray right from the Word of God. There's nothing more powerful than you repeating God's Word back to Him in prayer. He wrote it. He established the Word. When you let him know that you see it and you acknowledge it. There's nothing more powerful than that. So please consider taking verses like this and add them to your prayer life on behalf of us as a nation, on behalf of yourselves individually. Pray the word of God back to God. And then to go back to Isaiah 60 verse 4, let's pick up there. It says, lift up your eyes all around and see all of them, this is the kings he was referring to in the previous verse, all of them gather, they collect together themselves. They come to you, they resort, they follow, they run after you. Again, not after us. 
in our human understanding, but after the enlightenment of God, the dawning, the brightening of his light and his glory in us, they come after you. They come to you. And then such a beautiful, beautiful promise in the end of verse 4. Your sons, this is the bonus, your sons shall come from far and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Now the definition of the word far is very telling. Far means literally, literally or figuratively. It means both a place or a time. So your sons and daughters, your sons will come from far. They'll come from that place of being afar away, abroad, far off, far off from God. Or a long time ago, leaving God, because again, far means both time or place. Your sons will come back from being far away from God or having long time been away from God. And your daughters shall be nursed at your side. The word nurse, don't think about hospital nurses. The word nursed means to be built up or support, to foster as a parent or a nurse maid. Figuratively, it means to render or make firm and faithful. What a beautiful, beautiful promise. Your daughters will be nurtured, will be will be raised up, supported, built up, made firm and faithful at your side. And I just sense that there are maybe parents that will be hearing this word right now, that maybe when you were raising your children, you weren't a believer. Maybe you didn't have godly counsel to give to your children because you didn't know the Lord. But God wants to speak to you in encouragement. that now that you know him, Claim this provision that your sons will come from far and your daughters will be nursed at your side because now you have the counsel of God. Now you have the enlightenment of God and you can share that with your children. Even if they're adults, you can share that with your children. And then I want to look one last place in Luke chapter 15, verse 17. It's a beautiful passage about the prodigal son. We're very familiar with it many times, but... There's truth in these passages that apply for today. And it says, When the prodigal came to himself, when this son that had, be, had been wayward and for a long time, he was far away from his father and from God. When he came to himself, and a lot of prodigals in this time are going to come to themselves and realize, I'm in this mess. I don't want to live here. There's a far better provision for me. This prodigal said, How many hired servants of my father abound with food, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no more worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. God's not after servants. He's after sons. And then Luke 15, 20 says about the father and, and the son. He said the son rose up from where he was and he came to his father. But when he was still a far way off, when the son was still a far way off, the father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. He didn't see a wayward son. He saw a restored son. And there will be many sons and daughters in this time that will come back from afar and will be nursed at the side of God's people. And they will take counsel and they will be raised up and restored. So we just bless you. We pray that this has encouraged you. And we send our love to you in Jesus' name.